What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Fanco Wrestling, and today is a very special interview we have with Colt Shorts. We're talking all about wrestling camps, why you should go, some things that you should be learning there, and we're just diving in very deep on this full-length interview with Colt Shorts. Now, uh, just before we dive into this, I want to tell you that the tips that we're getting into aren't just, you know, you should go to wrestling camp and you should be learning single edge or you should be learning double edge or whatever that is. We're getting in depth and telling you what you should be learning and why you should be learning and, and we're getting really in depth. So first of all, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on Colt Shorts. Uh, this is Colt Shorts right here. First of all, in high school, he's a Powerade champ, Whippeal champion, so he's a Pennsylvania wrestler, a multiple time state placer, third time at the P or placed third at the PIAA state tournament. Which, you know, it's incredible to have a guy like this on the channel and teaching you all about wrestling. Um, in college, he wrestled at Cal Poly. He was a three-time Pac-12 placer and a Reno Tournament Champions finalist. He was also a placer at Cliff Keen, Las Vegas, and a national qualifier. So, you know, we're not talking to just some, you know, guy off the streets here, guys. Like, this is some in-depth knowledge. Now, Colt... Um, First of all, just to dive into a little bit, you know, we're diving into four ways to improve at wrestling camps, but really it, it's, <laughs> we have a lot more ways than just four tips uh, at the camps. I guess, you know, we have some bonus tips too at the end. We're going to be talking a little bit about what camps you should attend. So first of all, you know, I want to talk to you about why do you think, uh, you know, why do you think this is an important topic discussing wrestling camps? Yeah, uh, I think because as most of you wrestlers would know, um, it's a very hard sport that we're involved with. So it's usually the, the kids that are succeeding and really excelling at every level are the ones that are wrestling all year round. So it's not just the guys that are training, you know, with their high school or college team, you know, during the season, it's the off season mat time. That's really beneficial. So, um, I think that's one thing is just the off season mat time. It's keeping the rust off. You know, you're not just jumping right into the season and just hoping to excel right away, but, really just constantly training and trying to better yourself every day. And uh, I think, you know, it's just more competition in general. Um, you're seeing wrestlers that you're going to see throughout the year, so you kind of see what they're doing. And if they're not there, you know your competitor's not there training, then, you know, maybe you're getting the one up on them. So that's another thing too. And, you know, if, if, if your competitors are there, you're seeing what they're doing and you're seeing like how hard they're training. So I think that they're you know, there's physical and there's mental benefits to doing going to camps and training all year round. Absolutely. And, you know, we're going to dive into these first tips. First, we're going to talk about reasons that you should be going to camp. And then we're going to dive into some things you should be learning at camp. So one of the first things, you know, Colt and I discussed this a little bit, but one of the first things, Colt, you talk about is off-season mat time. So, you know, rolling around off the season on the mat – what exactly do you mean by that? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so I just think that, um, you know, like I said, it's 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 a little more, you know, in-depth training than just your regular season stuff. So, you know, you're going to have your, your lifts and your practices with your team throughout the season. But, you know, when you think back, maybe there's a time throughout the year where you're struggling a little bit. But, you know, you think back like, man, I've been putting a lot of work in and I've been training for so long. And you're, you think back to the workouts you were doing all on your own or, you know, these camps that you went to and, you know, you've been putting in a lot of work. So there's a reason that you, you should be excelling. And um, I just think that mentally, whenever you think back to those those moments, you'll you'll realize you're in it and you're invested. So um you know, you just got to keep pushing, and and I think that that's that's one thing is that mental edge that you can get. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the mental capacity really is very important when you're talking about these summer camps. When you talk about things to do in the off season, of course, you know a lot about that. Now, another one of the reasons that you discuss that you want to you know maybe talk a little bit about is preparing for college. So. You know, a lot of reasons that guys go to these camps is they want to learn a little bit more about college. So can you talk a little bit, you know, about parent for college, the life aspect of that? Yeah, for sure. So I think this is a huge tip because, you know, you go to college, you're not there for just wrestling. So you're there for the degree and there's a lot of other aspects of, you know, difficulty that are going to arise. So 
you know, the, the practices that you're doing with your team and your coaches and the lifts and all that stuff is going to be really difficult, but there's a lot of balancing that has to take place with your, with your academics. And there's a lot of priorities that will be thrown at you without you even realizing it. So I think the whole college life and getting used to that is a good thing. So when you're at these camps with, you know, colleges being the, you know, the, the main guys showing you around, um, it's just getting used to seeing what those, what those counselors are doing. Usually the counselors and the clinicians are the, um, the wrestlers of the university and the coaching staff. So, you know, it's good to see, you know, okay, these, these might be my teammates depending on what year in, in uh, high school you are. Um, and you kind of can just kind of see who they are and the kind of people they are and the coaching staff as well. Cause you know, you get this, you get to truly meet that coach. And if he becomes your coach, then you kind of already have a, understanding of the kind of person he is and what he values so i think those are some really big things i also think that it's cool to understand the facilities so if you end up going to that college where they're the host you can see the weight room and you kind of already have a feel for it you can see the wrestling room you can see maybe the study lounge the some of the academic facilities so um i think those are all big pluses because you know it, it can be overwhelming at first you just jump right in and not not seeing everything and not you know getting a feel for that life can be you know a big step and that's just it's just a quick little thing obviously you'll go on a visit if you're really considering that university but you know waking up with these with these clinicians and, and counselors and just kind of realizing like man this is what it would be like waking up at you know you know five o'clock in the morning going for a run before the sun's up and stuff like that so I think that's a big thing. And then even if it's a, it's not a commuter camp and you're staying there, which is sometimes the case for um, if you're from fall and stuff like that, you get to see the dorm. So that's another thing that, you know, you wouldn't always get to see if you're, you know, not taking an actual visit there. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty neat. And th the other thing that I think that's kind of neat is maybe, maybe, you know, you're not in high school yet. You know, you're, you're a junior high kid, maybe you're, you know, in, grade school but whatever it is you're still learning what those you know those high school kids are going through what those college guys are going through especially and kind of maturing a little bit you're you're understanding where you should be progressing as a wrestler because you know as you're going through these camps a lot of times uh you know throughout the year you're training with a lot of the same guys whereas this going to college camps going to these camps actually exposes you to some more wrestlers now the other thing one of the third tips that we have for reasons on going to camp that you talk about cole is preparing for college wrestling so what do you mean exactly by preparing for the wrestling aspect in college yeah so i think that it's it's really good to understand like we said the the life the aspects of that with all the other things not wrestling related but wrestling in general since that's your sport it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be a big jump. So, I mean, depending on how competitive you've been throughout your life and how maybe competitive your high school is or what kind of club you go to, all these preparation tools, it's going to still be a bit of a shock because depending on the division, I'd, I'd say, especially division one, I, I know that my first year was, was difficult, you know, like mm -hmm. these guys are, you know, fifth year seniors and you're just a little freshman and right. you know, these guys have been training for five straight years, you know, doing, doing all these lifts and runs and really hard workouts and competing against other division one caliber athletes. And that was like, wow, these guys are, they, they're used to it. And me, I'm like, okay, well I'm, I'm fresh out of high school and it's, it's a bit of a shock. Of course, you know, the next four years weren't as bad cause I already had that, you know, overwhelming, uh, a feeling, but mm -hmm. It's, it's good to understand that college regimen. So what I mean by that is, is your sleep, you know, you're, you're not going to have 10 hour, 12 hour nights of sleep every night because mm -hmm. there's going to be things you're doing. You're going to be up studying. You're going to be doing all kinds of stuff like that. So when you're at these camps and you're doing four or five workouts a day, trying to, you know, have your breakfast, lunch, dinner, maybe there's, you know, mandatory weigh-ins so that they're monitoring your hydration levels. You can't get too low. Um, different motivational talks at some camps. There's a lot of different things that you're going to be going um, and, and experiencing. So um, just balancing all that stuff and, and working out while you're completely sore and you're not feeling like working out because that's mm -hmm. what's going to be. If, you, if you're going to be on a college team, you can't just take a day off. You can't just take a practice off because 
not only you are going to feel like not working out and feeling extremely sore and tired, all your teammates are like that too. So you're in it together. It's a team sport as well. So I think that's, that's one of the big things is just getting in those workouts and understanding that it's going to be like that for the entire season, the entire year. So when you're not wanting to work out is when you really got to push the hardest. Oh yeah. I, I think that is so powerful. Exactly what you just said. Um, I mean, I mean all of it really, because although, you know, a lot of these camps is like, especially these intensive camps, the technique camps, whatever it is, you may have, a few sessions a day where you're wrestling, you may have three or four sessions a day of wrestling, lifting, whatever it is. Um, although you may not have that during the regular season, high school or college, whatever it is. Well, you still have a lot of other things going on. Uh, so I think that is so, so powerful. Exactly what you said. And really, I think that leads into this last tip that we have for reasons on going to camp before we get into the four things that you should be learning at camps. Um, the last tip that you had to talk about uh, as far as reasons of going to camp is getting in shape for the season. So although it is the off season, what exactly are you talking about? You know, with getting in shape for the season, wh- what are you, what are you doing at these camps? What do you think is uh, so great about camps getting you in shape for the season? Yeah. So it, it kind of depends on the person, on the wrestler himself so or herself. So it's, it's a little bit dependent on that. Maybe you're trying to get stronger. Maybe you're trying to maintain your weight or trying to lose weight and trim down. Most of the case, most of the times it's, you know, the guy trying to trim down and, and lose some body fat that have, that he's, uh, you know, accumulated for a little while off season and all that. But, um, it's just, it's just, it's that getting in shape and, and, and being prepared for that first, uh, preseason, preseason workout. So you don't want to just jump in and feel, you know, like crap and you're trying to keep up with the guys that may, maybe on your team have been training and, and doing all the extra workouts off season. So that's one thing. And, um, you know, and that just jump starts you into your regular season. So if you have a really good preseason training and, and, and that feeds off your other teammates too, because like I said, it is a team sport. So, you know, if you individually are prepared and ready to go and you haven't taken any time off because, you know, this is the sport that requires you to, to train all year, mm-hmm. then you know, teammates are going to feed off that. And overall, you're going to have a better experience in the long run with, you know, like successful team. So, yeah, that, that really, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And the, I mean, the thing with it, you know, you mentioned the year round about it. I mean, it, it's so important. You don't want to get into the season you know, November, you know, whenever it starts third week in November in high school and that's your first practice or that's your first time working out because I mean, that's not only going to lead to, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're not only going to be behind all these other guys that have been training in the off season in year round, uh, but you're also going to be hurting because, you know, a lot of these high school practices, they're not just jumping in their first day. Uh, especially if you're at a tough high school, you're not jumping in there first day and drilling, you know, single legs, just, you know, or, or learning a penetration step. That's not, that's not what you're doing the first day of practice in high school. You're in there, you're drilling hard, you're wrestling hard, you're wrestling live hard the first day. Uh, and I mean, you're going to be hurting. Uh, not only are you going to be sore, you're going to be, you know, possibly throwing up and it's, it's not going to be fun. So, I think the next things that we're going to get into are the ways to improve at camps. So, of course, you know, I guess the number one thing is learning technique, okay, um, at these camps and, and maybe writing down a couple of things that you're learning at these camps. But really, we want to get into a couple more almost like mindset uh, things that you should be learning at these camps. So, one of the first things, Colt, that you talk about uh, as far as things to learn at camps uh, is work ethic. So talk a little bit about the work ethic and what do you think uh, is important about that for wrestlers? Yeah. So I think for work ethic itself, um, you know, you can see who the guys are that are really excelling at every level. So, you know, if you're in there in the practice room and you're working out, but you're just going through the motions while, you know, the guy to your right is winning Fargo titles and stuff like that. You're going to see how hard he's training. You're going to see what he's doing. He's probably not the first or the, the last one in the door and the first one to leave. It's probably the opposite. He's probably the first one in there. 
he's probably doing a little warm up himself. He's probably getting prepared. Um, and then after he's probably doing the extra, he's probably doing pull ups and push ups and maybe doing an airdyne bike match or, you mm-hmm. know, he's, he's putting in extra, the stuff behind the scenes that is not required of you, but it's definitely expected of you if you're going to excel. So I think that's, that's one thing as well as, you know, work ethic. It's not just what's asked of you, but it's what you need to be doing, you know, subconsciously too, remembering like, Oh, I put a lot of extra work in. And, you know, when you, when you're getting into crunch time, when it's the postseason and you're, you know, competing for a state title and things like that, um, you know, you, you can think like, man, I really put a lot of work in and this is my time. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And, uh, I think that kind of leads into this second tip that you have for, things that you should be learning at camps as far as, you know, first work ethic. But the next thing that you have is pushing your limits. So as far as pushing your limits, what are your thoughts on this? Um, yeah. So personally thinking back, you know, there's some practices that stick in my mind that I'll probably never forget. And it's because I was pushed to my limit and, you know, I just bought in knowing that, you know, this practice is going to be really hard, but, you know, me and the partner that I was with, we just kept pushing and pushing as hard as we could. And that's, you know, that's hard to do because sometimes you you don't necessarily realize it, but you're protecting your body. You're like, "Ah, I'm not going to get too tired. But, you know, understanding that your mind is so powerful and your body can withstand a lot more than you think is, you know, not something that you can just teach someone, but it's something that has to be found within. So, Mm -hmm. you know, like that specific workout when I'm thinking back, I probably lost upwards of 16 pounds or more in the practice because it was so long and so hard. And, um, there was a point where I physically felt like I couldn't even get up, you know, and my coach, same with my, we were just battling so hard. So many, so many live goes with sprints all tied in between. And he was physically picking me up by my armpits to get me back on my feet. Um, so I think that that's the thing too, is, is understanding your limit is a lot farther than you probably think it is. And, you know, that, that goes hand in hand with, you know, the day before you push yourself to the limit, your breaking point maybe, or, you know, you push yourself to a limit that you may have never felt before, but you know, the next day is a new day and that's where you got to push past that point even further. So, you know, as long as you can just keep doing that, maybe you can't consistently do that because you're going to have your days where it's a little lighter, more technique based, but, you know, pushing your limits and finding that and just keep pushing and, and going harder and harder and, you know, keeping that intensity throughout the entire practice that, that, you know, like I said, your teammates feed off that, you know, you're putting in the work, your coaches are seeing it and it's going to pay off if you can, can do that. Mm -hmm. And and now let me ask you this and let me kind of feed off that a little bit as far as pushing your limits. So during camps, uh, do you think that it's maybe a little bit easier, not, not easier, but uh, more efficient to find, how far you can push your body in the off season. Um, Maybe because, you know, during the season, as far as like a lot of kids, they're, they're in school. Um, They have a lot of other things you're dealing with grades. They're thinking about their upcoming matches. Uh, They're, you know, losing weight. They're trying to find that. Do you, as far as you personally, have you found that you found that you can push to your limits and find that limit to where you can, you know, end up finding that again in the season. But like what, does, does that make a little bit of sense? Is, what do you have to say about that? Yeah. Um, I think that it's it's probably not just solely in one time time of the year mm-hmm. where, you, where it's easier to find your limit. I think that it depends on the like the atmosphere. So, you know, if I'm at an off-season wrestling camp and it's, you know, several weeks long and I'm there and maybe on a campus or something like that and I'm staying in the dorms, you know, it, it's easier to find your limit because there's all all kinds of kids from all across the country there with you, and you know, you're all there for a reason, and that's to get better. So, mm-hmm. you know, workouts like that, and then there is, you know, counselors and clinicians, some of the best, you know, wrestlers in U.S. history, and things like that at, at some camps. You know, you, you have that extra. You're like, oh, I'm gonna push because you know maybe John Smith's breathing down my neck, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing. And then, you know, during the season, I think that it's, it's sometimes easier to push a limit then because you're with your, your, your boys, you're with all your teammates, right. your family. Right. And, you know, you know that I'm not just going to lay down and, and, and quit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you look to your right and left and there's guys on your team, your buddies, some of your best friends for life, and they're all pushing to their limit. So, 
you know, why, why, do you, why would you lay down? So I think that that's another thing too, but you know, there's a lot of hours in the day that you can find time for a workout. And I think that it's a lot harder to do it when it's just you when it's just your own mind and there's not someone breathing down your neck per se, but, um, you know, you got to find a way to push yourself when no one's looking. And those are the kind of workouts and those are the things that you remember. Oh yeah, no, that, that I, I like what you said there. And, and I, I, like, I, I didn't mean at all that you couldn't push yourself during the season. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that because there's a little bit less going on yeah. in the off season. So that's very interesting to hear about now. The next topic, the third topic uh, that, you know, the third thing that you should be learning at wrestling camps, um, I mentioned a little bit off the top is, you know, just technique. So talk a little bit about the technique, what kind of techniques you should be learning, um, maybe what you should be doing to remember that technique and what you have to say about that. Yeah. So depending on the camp, again, you know, you may you know, maybe it's a one day camp or maybe it's a a month long camp in some cases, but you're going to be learning a lot of different technique and a lot of different moves and things from a lot of different people. So I think the best way to remember it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have already, you know, been told this, it's, it's to write it down. And that's, that's a, that's a good way to remember anything in life. So writing it down, I know I still have notes in my iPhone from, you know, years ago, Tervel Delognev or, or Uriah Faber, even <laughs> some some big name guys teaching technique. And some of the times I was a I was a camp clinician or counselor, and I was like, well, I want to just remember this because you know you're never you're never out of position to learn yourself. So, right. um, you know, writing them down and and sometimes even filming is is even better because you can actually visually see it, depending if you're a visual learner and things like that. But um, yeah, and then and that being said. You know, if it's a shorter duration camp and maybe you don't have the time to write it down, you probably will. But um, it's taking the things that, you know, you like best, that feel best for your style because you're not there to completely change your style. You're just there to learn some more things that maybe you can add to your repertoire. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just realizing that, you know, there's three big things, maybe one in each position, neutral, top, bottom, or maybe just two things from your feet where you feel maybe you got to get better and neutral and, you know, you got to take at least a couple of things. So it's picking the things that work best for your style or maybe the things you, that felt the best drilling it or, um, things like that. And then realizing, all right, I got to keep this with me. So next time you're at the practice, maybe not at your camp, you got to add that into your drilling regimen. And so you're hitting your normal, I see your normal single, but maybe you learned, you know, some sort of, uh, Russian tie shot or something like that. So you just got to keep adding it to your, to your regimen and making sure you're drilling it. Cause the best way to get better at that move is to keep practicing it. You can't just, you know, not always some, some guys can, yeah. but, uh, you can learn it and just hit it in a match. It's usually not the case. You got to at least drill it a, quite a few times. Right. No, you, you, you bring up a very important point in that you just don't want to write that down and then, okay, now it's sitting in your phone or whatever. Uh, like you actually have to apply that. You have to apply what you learn. So you're you're not only you know you go to camp, then you write down what you learn, then you're applying what you learn. So it's not it's like it's a process that in order to actually get better, it's not just writing it down. And I like what you said about putting it down in your phone or even filming it. Um, because I remember you know back when I went to camps in like junior high. I mean, it's kind of funny, but like thinking back, like, you know, there were, there were no iPhones then, so there was nothing to actually put the notes in. So like, I was actually, personally, I was like writing stuff in a notebook. And I think oh, yeah. that it, now really there's no excuse to not write something in your phone, um, add a yeah. note in there. I think that is a, a very important point. Now, let me ask you this, Colt, um, as far as writing things down, should you be writing just, you know, I learned a... Russian tie today. I learned a high C today. How detailed should you be going into these notes? Yeah, so it's definitely got to be pretty detailed. You can't just write them down, write down the name of the move because you know there's a lot of variations. There's a lot of tiny little tips and and like secrets that you know really allow that move to work. Um, so I th- think it's got to be a detailed thing. I'm actually looking at my notes right now and. You know, I got I got some from John Smith, and I put ankle pick, but I also you know put a put some things that I can understand. So I I wrote it's a starting from a collar tie, and I say I lower my level and drop step pulling him backwards. 
and then my head is below his and then I'm driving in and finishing. So I understand, you know, from my couple points and notes there, you know, I, I can visually see him doing that move and then me hitting it afterwards. Um, so yeah, you got to definitely be in depth with that. You can't just put the name of the move, but you know, there's different positionings, you know, you got to, there's timing aspects too. Like when you're lowering your level, you might be simultaneously posting an arm and things like that. So um, make sure you're putting in those keywords like simultaneous. Cause if yeah. you're, you know, in the lower your level and then post, you know, those two have to happen together for the move to really work and excel on the best guys. So yeah, you definitely have to write down on quite a few things. And then, you know, even after the, maybe the, the workout or the practice, go back in and think like, okay, like, let me add a little more to this. So mm -hmm. it may not just be a couple words. It might be a full paragraph on one move. Yeah, no, that's, that's, very good. Um, now, when were you writing these notes down uh, during these camps? Before practice, you know, before sessions, during sessions, after sessions? Would you wait a few hours? When were you writing them down? Yeah, so sometimes, um, like I said, all these camps are all different, so you're going to have to find your time. So maybe if there's, you know, a smaller room and there's like the bigger guys going and you're in the smaller guy's session, you can kind of see like, okay, this guy's teaching the same technique that maybe I already saw or... Mm -hmm. I'm about to see, or maybe I'll see the next day and things like that. So you can kind of find your time if you're on the side watching. Um, if you're actually learning it right then and there, you know, there's water breaks. If you're going to get a quick water break and write it down then, yeah. um, sometimes, you know, if you, if you ask, you can, you can write it down as he's showing it, as long as your, you know, notebooks off to the side. Cause I know like some camps that I've been to, um, back in the day, like that's was, that was encouraged. Mm -hmm. It was encouraged to take notes as he's, as he's going through it. So you don't forget it. Um, but it, yeah, like I said, it's going to be a little bit dependent on the, like the atmosphere of the camp. If it's a real intensive camp and it's just a quick little, you know, you guys are hitting this, then, you know, you might not have the time, but of course, afterwards, after the workout, um, finishes, then you'll definitely have your time there. Yeah. I, I like what you said. And I think that leads into this final point really a lot because you mentioned the, the, you know, when, when can you write notes? Maybe you want to ask, uh, the, technician but you want to ask the coach whoever it is about when you can be writing things down well that really leads into this last point that we have as far as asking questions maybe you're nervous about something maybe you're nervous about a move maybe you're nervous about you know can i write stuff down when when can i write stuff down well what do you have to say about asking questions quote how important is it to ask questions yeah, I mean, just like anything in school, outside of school, asking questions is going to help you to understand. So um, you can't you can't feel afraid to ask questions. There really is no dumb question. Um, so yeah, just you know, as as he's showing the move, they're probably going to ask you guys, like you, you you campers, you know, is, do you have any questions? And that's your time to speak up. I mean, there's been times I know where kids are you know in a hard workout and it's an intensive setting, and kids are asking questions, maybe just to slow the pace down or get a breather. So that's different. That's when you shouldn't really be asking questions. You ask that kind of that kind of stuff after the fact. Um, but you know, during the technique sessions and things like that, you know, when you're drilling it, if something doesn't feel right, or you want to make sure you're doing it and you're genuinely, you know, concerned or you know, trying to, you know, get the best fit for you, um, that's the, definitely the best time to ask questions because you know there's only going to be a benefit from it. Yeah, I, I think that's that's great and. One of the last things that we want to get into are maybe some bonus tips. Um, the bonus tips that we have are camps that you should attend. So, you know, as I mentioned at the front of this video, Colt is uh, obviously a longtime wrestler. He's been wrestling his whole life. He's been to multiple, multiple, multiple camps, and he has a few that really stand out in his mind personally as far as where he'd like to or where he thinks are important camps. So, Colt. What are what are these bonus camps? What do you think are some camps you should be attending if you're in you know grade school up through high school? Yeah, so I mean, there's definitely going to be camps all over the country. There's going to be your local camps that are smaller, and then there's going to be the national camps, which are you know bringing in kids from all over the country. Um, just some some that stick out in my mind that you know maybe I went to as a camper, or maybe that I worked as a as a counselor or clinician first one that steps in my mind is the j-rob intensive camps um there's definitely a lot of locations there's like a pennsylvania iowa minnesota there's a seven day a 14 day mm -hmm. i specifically went to the 28 day and that was a 
that was a that was a tough one there was a lot of a lot of running involved uh you know a lot of workouts and it's like that same thing i i was there in minnesota and you know i actually built a relationship with jay robinson and um a lot of the a lot of the um the actual wrestlers at the university of minnesota so i saw their weight room their wrestling room their facilities um i was all around the campus living in the dorm so that was a really cool step um to see all that and understand what that atmosphere is like and you know and i do know that after i did you know attend that camp when it came time for my preseason training in high school i was i was ready to go there was there was no running workout that I wasn't winning the sprints in or, you know, feeling great after these long distance runs and things like that. It was definitely a big transition, my preseason training from the year before to that current year after I went to that camp and we were doing workouts and, you know, really pushing ourselves. So that's 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 one big one. Um, another one that I went to as a camper and was a was a counselor for was the Naval Academy Wrestling Camps. Um, so that's in Annapolis, Maryland. It's an awesome place to be. Um, you, you meet some really, really amazing people at wrestling and, and not related to wrestling, mm -hmm. some, some great individuals and, you know, that, that campus is beautiful right on the bay right there. So, um, that's a good one. That's definitely tough. I worked alongside Navy SEALs and remember when I was there as a camper working with Navy SEALs doing, you know, workouts in the water and, uh, you know, hearing from their input as as they're a, as they're a seal so that was some really really cool stuff that i'll never forget yeah. um, another one that i didn't attend as a camper but i was a coach for for a few years um in the west coast which is the west coast wrestling camp so that's held in carlsbad california um a lot of the cal poly clinicians or uh counselors rather were, were working those camps while i was there in school and that was just an awesome camp because mark munoz he's a great guy uh awesome he's a ufc fighter and he brings in some big name guys like john smith like i said uriah faber mark branch coach of wyoming right. anthony rope he's you know some world team guys like travel delognev was there for a heavyweight guy so there's a wide range of guys and they're all some of like the best in the world and country so that was an awesome experience from from both sides of you so if you're out in the west coast that's a, that's a good camp to definitely attend um and then you know, just if you're in this area and like the Pittsburgh area, there's a camp, um, August 5th, 6th, 7th quest wrestling camp. So that's a club that I trained and went to my whole life basically. And, you know, now I'm, you know, helping out and coaching there here and there. So, um, that's a great camp. I know some of the clinicians that are going to be there this year, um, in years past are unbelievable. Some Olympic and world gold medalists, even right. Kenny Monday's going to be there. Nate Carr, uh, Virtus Jones, Scott Collins, um, Paul Keyshaw, Timor Terry. So there's a lot of like very, very high level guys that are going to teach a lot of ranging techniques. Um, and they're going to put you through some great workouts. So if you're in the area, definitely be sure to look up Quest School of Wrestling and uh, try to register for that camp if you can. And then I think just finally is just the the local um, the local camps are great, but the college camp campuses um the college or colleges are going to have their camps e each year and you know maybe there's a camp campus that you're really looking forward to to seeing more in depth than maybe just a visit depending on your year in school if you're like a junior or senior and you're really interested in you know a couple of different schools mm -hmm. or maybe you know you're younger and you want to just attend a college campus because it's nearby the college camp um definitely look into that so like we said before those tips seeing seeing the staff and the wrestlers and the facilities, those are all really good to understand and get a feel for, you know, early on. Yeah. I, well, I mean, those, the camps that you mentioned are, are great. And I, like, I like your last tip a lot, uh, your last camp a lot too, talking about, you know, the college camps, maybe a college that you want to go to. Um, for me personally, like I went to the Penn state camp in my freshman year of high school and like that really, uh, made me want to go to school there although i didn't wrestle there um i knew that i wanted to attend penn state and like really after that camp like getting to know the campus just like you said um it it, it really helped out a lot uh one camp uh, as you guys know that uh, i'm now working at campbell university of course you have carrie colat down here teaching his technique camps his intensive camps are also great you know just kind of being a fly on the wall um, learning a little bit from him there, some very impressive technique, just another camp I wanted to kind of plug, but, uh, as Colt said, guys, listen, um, 
you know, he will be at the Quest Wrestling Camp on August 5th, 6th, 7th, and is it the 8th too, or just three-day camp? I believe it's just a three-day three day camp. camp. Uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh, he will be there. Um, he will be one of the counselors, and you know, it, it's it's a great camp uh, for you to attend. And seriously, like, make sure that if you're in the area around Pittsburgh area, West Virginia, um, Morgantown type of area, if you're within driving distance, uh, I mean, even if you're not within driving distance, check out that camp. It's a great camp. Um, I want to thank Colt for coming on to the. Finka Wrestling Channel and talking about wrestling camps, you know, I think he shared a lot of very, very uh, important tips here that you can take away. Make sure you leave some comments below as far as uh, what takeaways you have from this video. And the last thing, I just want to make sure I let you guys know, make sure that on this channel we have all wrestling news tips and lifestyle. And there are many wrestling tips that I'm sharing right here. Uh, as well as many upcoming interviews. So make sure you check out all of those. Subscribe to this channel and keep on watching.